Cell Machines is about basically uh, humanizing computing. So we basically build biologically inspired cognitive architectures which drive virtual human models. And what that means is that you're able to have face-to-face -face interactions with computers like you can with people. And tell us real quickly, where are we going to see a, uh, avatars coming up in AI over time? How is, what, how is it applicable to marketers who are walking up so, and down so the process? We actually, we actually don't call them avatars, we actually call them digital humans. So, so the digital humans um, essentially embody a brand personality. So you can basically bring anything to life, like whether it's a virtual spokesperson or we can even animate non-human characters that could be a brand coming to life, but it allows it to emotionally interact with a customer. So it creates a level of engagement never seen before. Excellent. Why don't you give us a quick demonstration of some of the work that you have going on? Okay, well, um, this, this, this one here, oh, what's, what's she doing? So this, this one here is uh, Baby X. So this is a project, this is actually an older version of Baby X. But basically, Baby X is a virtual baby. She's animated completely by neural networks, and she's sensing the environment. So if I make it like a loud noise, you know, there, she can see me as I walk around. You'll see that she, she's looking around at me. We can kind of zoom in and, and see her face and look what's going on. We can change the lighting. Now, if we see what she can see, you see she can see my face here. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? So she's responding to me. She's not copying me. She's actually responding to me. She's got her own emotional models. So we model everything from virtual oxytocin to virtual cortisol and all kinds of things. So she actually has a effectively a, a stress system in, in which I'm gonna, um, I'm essentially abandoning, I'm gonna hide from her at the moment and we'll see what she does. So she's starting to look around and she, she really seeks human comfort. So if you look up at the, one of the graphs, you'll start seeing essentially the, the uh, there's a red line which is a virtual cortisol building up and that's setting off her stress system. So anyway, we'll, we'll put her out of her misery. Hey, sweetheart, it's okay, it's okay, don't cry, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, good girl, yeah, it's okay, yeah. So what she's doing there is she's, you know, I'm, I'm basically, she's seeking, I'm, I'm basically calming her down with my voice and my facial expressions, you know, just like you do with a, a real child. Now, she's, everything that she does is actually driven by essentially cognitive models. So these are, these, are, these are simplified brain models which drive the different parts like her attention system. You can kind of see where she's paying attention to. I can wave my arm around and she'll, she'll look at that. Now we can, we can also take a look at what's actually under the hood driving her. So she actually can also learn in real time. That's another thing. So but I'll, I'm going to remove her face for a second and bam, this is her virtual brain. So basically this virtual brain is has the neural network circuits mapped onto the appropriate neuroanatomy. So we're literally watching an interactive brain watch me. So as I move around, you can see it's, it's, it's following, you can see the ocular motor nuclei firing, and we can rotate this virtual brain around, and we can zoom in, and we can look at even parts of the brain stem. So this is really the system's essentially paying attention to the outside world. Now that activity that's happening is then driving the neural network circuits then driving the eyeballs which are then affecting what's actually coming into the system and so you can do things like change its level of virtual dopamine like for example I can I can bump up tons of dopamine and it gives way too much feedback this is kind of like Huntington's disease we can knock that down too little feedback this is a bit like Parkinson's disease now you'll see it even affects the pupils of a baby's eyes as it does that so this also changes her learning rate so there's all these different factors now Baby can also, um, she's learning to read as well, so I've got my uh, little first words book here, so we can show her something. So, okay, spit out, what's this? What's this? Good girl. Okay, show her something from New Zealand. Hey, what's this? What's this? Good girl. So basically, now, what we can do with this is we can also essentially apply it to drive adult models. So these, these are models where they're essentially you know, simulating like, like a virtual assistant, for example. Could be a teacher, could be a sort of something to simulate. And so what I'm loading up at the moment are these essentially some face models. And these models are able, you're able to precisely control like a musical instrument. So they're able to convey that sort of level of emotion. And in a way, the face is the most sophisticated sort of instrument we have for emotion. And so by putting this technology together, we're building systems which are able to sort of simulate emotional effects but also give you precise control over them so that you can actually directly interact. And it's very much like playing music in order to achieve an emotional effect. So I'm a brand and I want to put 
uh, a digital human out in front of my customers. Uh, how do I gear it so that I get the right kind of personality that's right for my brand? Right, okay, so when we build the digital humans, they have their own emotional models which can be configured to behave in particular ways. And we've actually got absolutely precise control over what their faces can do. So for example here, you know, I can move the brows up and down, I can do, you know, make all kinds of things. I can do really subtle things like, you know, widen the eyes. You know, just very subtle things which have a strong emotional effect. If I move this, this brow up like this, and I'm just gonna tilt the head here. So with just two active actions, we've now created essentially a empathetic sort of caring expression. So this is the equivalent of like playing sad notes on a, on a musical instrument. So you, it enables when you essentially plug this into, into you know, how you want to basically show emotion, you can control it precisely like that and layer it and, and it changes the meaning of you know, what's, you know, what's going on. So for example, you know, if we if we bring the brows down, but we might, you know, scrunch the nose up, or no, this one here, you know, we might, you know, there's all, everything means something, you know, if you're concentrating, you know, something's difficult or whatever. So it's, it's all, it's all like this whole vocabulary which has been untapped so far in terms of human-computer interaction, and it's totally, you know, ready to go now. So can you just quickly describe for us the difference between programming and cognitive as it comes to this? Because as I watch you move the dials up and down, it feels like programming, but obviously it's going to be applied in a cognitive way. So how does, what's the difference? So in the virtual human models, they've got their own emotional systems, which can be used to basically drive essentially emotional behavior. What I'm moving with these sliders is essentially pulling muscles. So it's essentially the strings of the instrument. So you can then control that. So if it's in a cognitive system, the cognitive system can basically specify what type of expression it wants to give. And then that's really comes down to the control of those, those things. So it's, it's kind of like what notes do you want to play on a piano? So what we're looking at here is, a, is a, one of our new avatars that we're, we're building at the moment. And this is for a, another collaboration with uh, IBM Watson. And so uh, this avatar is going to be a, a virtual assistant. She's going to basically uh, help through uh, customers of a well-known um, software company. So, uh, so you know, we, she's super detailed. We can zoom right into her, her eyes and, you know, take a, take a look around. We build every single eyelash, you know. We can sort of, you know, look around at her. So, you know, so it's, it's like, and we can pretty much build any any face. We can build exact re replicas. It could be a, a, a celebrity. It could be a spokesperson. You know, and we can. So we also build photorealistic animals and all kinds of things. So it's really whatever you want to use. So it's it's like a, uh, uh, you know, it, it really um, yeah the the world's your oyster. So in terms of like you think about populating the world in the future with all kinds of virtual characters which are alive and responsive. It's like it's infinite.